guys, welcome back to another video on our Sick Baggers YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to replace these stock headers down here on this 2018 Milwaukee 8. I'm guessing you've probably thought about doing it in the past, but you weren't quite sure how to do it. And uh, actually guys, it's pretty simple. Uh, the owner of this bike is going to come in today and we're both going to tackle this because it's a lot easier to do with two people. Now, as you can see on this bike, it's pretty well stripped down. This bike is getting a lot of work done. We've done the JNR Air Ride and uh, we're getting ready to do the bars and stuff, but uh, we started to do the headers yesterday and I thought this would be a good video for you guys and uh, could probably cut down on a little time uh, since we already had some of this stuff removed. Basically to go over the things that we've already taken off that you do need to take off, it is best to go ahead and take the saddle bag off and that side cover off and just get that stuff out of your way. We've also removed the front floorboard up there. It's just a couple of bolts. Get down there and pull your floorboard off. If you just get down there and look at it, you'll see exactly how it comes off. There's nothing tricky about it. So pull the floorboards off, side cover and the saddlebag. Just get everything out of the way. You don't want to scratch anything. Um, that's the best thing to do. This bike has the Advan Black Color Mesh uh, lowers with speaker pods in it. And uh, this one over here will be getting in the way to get to those uh, front header bolts up there. So we'll still need to remove that. Like I said, we started on it yesterday and I thought it'd be a good chance to uh, shoot a video for you guys. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do guys is remove the slip-ons. Now these are already aftermarket RC component four and a half inch slip-ons. So Josh is just gonna take the rear hanger bracket bolts out and then remove the slip-on muffler bracket up there where the slip-on goes onto the header. So at this point, the slip-on is loose and we should be able to pull it off. And what you'll do is just repeat that on the other side and you'll have your slip-ons off the headers. So now that we have both slip-ons off, what you'll wanna do is go under the bike and remove the crossover pipe hanger. As you can see right here, you have a half inch bolt. You're just gonna pull this and the hanger will come off for the cross under pipe and then we can go up here and start removing the actual headers. So from here, what we want to do is go ahead and disconnect the O2 sensors right underneath where your side cover goes. And if you have an ABS system, which is this, it'll be right underneath here. If not, it'll still be under here, but look for the white and the black plug. Now this is going to be zip tied off all over the place. So just kind of follow the lines and remove the zip ties. Once we get the zip ties undone, just squeeze and disconnect. White goes to white, black goes to black. That part's easy to remember. And when you poke this through here, you'll see that the white goes to the front O2 sensor. So just remember that, you may want to write that down. And then your black one goes to the rear O2 sensor, which you can see right here. So once we have the O2 sensors disconnected and the wires pulled out, you're gonna have a half inch nut on the rear header. You're gonna have one here and one up here. So just get a deep well and remove those nuts. So now we move to the front header and you're going to have two half inch nuts again, one here and one here. So just remove those two nuts and pull that flange back. And then all we have to do is remove the bottom bracket and the header pipe will come off. So the only real good way to get to that front bolt is actually just go to the other side of the motorcycle and get a wrench in there. Uh, you can take that off. It's not real long winded, so it doesn't take too long to come off. But once that's done, we're ready to remove the bracket and the headers. Okay, so the last thing you need to do is remove this stock bracket right here. Once again, half inch nut. And then we 
should be able to walk the exhaust off. So what we need to do right now, guys, is get the O2 sensors out of the stock pipe. We're going to remove the snap rings and the head pipe clamps because we're going to reuse those on the new headers. So once you have the circlip off, all you have to do is pull the exhaust port flange off and you can see here that it slotted on one side for that circlip to sit in when you put it on the new exhaust. So once you get those off, all you have to do is remove the O2 sensors. And remember, once again, the back is black and the front is white. So it's pretty easy to remember, guys, just uh, back in black. I'm pretty sure we can all remember that. But just loosen it up and remove the O2 sensors for the rear and for the front. Now, as you can see on the head pipes that we have here, we had powder coated black and you'll notice that we had the blue painters tape on there to keep from scratching it while we put our clamps and the circlip back on. And this is because the powder coat is heated to about 400 degrees and it still scratches pretty easy until we really get it on the bike and bake it on. Uh, if you just have a stainless pipe, you can go ahead and do the following steps without doing the painter's tape and you'll be fine. Slide the bracket on with the groove facing towards the motor and then go ahead and put your circlip back on. So what we need to do now is get the 18 to 12 millimeter O2 sensor adapters put in the header pipes and then we can put our O2 sensors back in. So just remember the black one went to the back, screw it in, and then the white one to the front, and just snug those up, guys. You don't need to put anything on there. You don't need to torque them hard down. Just snug them up and they'll be good to go. Okay, so the pipes are ready to put back on, but we need to change out our brackets. This is the stock bracket for the rear cross under pipe, and it's a 3 16 Allen wrench, and we're just gonna take those out and get that old bracket out of there. So we got the old bracket off, and we're gonna put the new bracket on now with the same two bolts that came out and get that torque down, and it'll be ready for the uh, cross under pipe when we get to that. So now that he has that tightened down, that bracket's ready to go. Okay, so from here we're gonna pull the transmission outer cover completely off so we can get the new hanger bracket on there. For the and then we can remove the two lower bolts on the transmission cover. Amen. And now we can remove the two lower bolts in the transmission cover. and mount our bracket with the same two bolts. And now we can put the outer cover back on. So from here guys, we would go ahead and install all of our heat shields and stuff. You can install these loosely on the pipes. But once again, since we had these header pipes powder coated and this is super soft still until we actually bake it on real good with the 
uh, motor. Um, we're going to install the heat shields last, but if you have the stainless pipes, once again, right now, you can go ahead and then loosely install your heat shields on these pipes before you put them on the bike. Now, before you put your header pipes on, go ahead and right here, inspect your crush gasket. You want to make sure that this isn't frayed or cut or anything like that. This bike's fairly new, so these crush gaskets look really good in here. So you can reuse these as long as these aren't torn or ripped or anything like that. Uh, if you do see a tear or rip or frayed or anything like that, you're going to need to go down and purchase some new crush gaskets that go in there. Uh, but these look really good, so we'll go ahead and get the header pipes put on. Okay, so we're going to start by putting the rear header on. We've got our bracket lined up there and he just has to put it up on the two bolts and get the nuts back on and get those started. So now we have to slide this into the back side of the bracket and then run the bolts through to secure it to the new bracket on the bottom of the transmission. Here's kind of the top view on the bracket that we were just working on. It's kind of hard to get a camera in there, but that nut bar slides right in that hole. And then you put the two bolts in right here and it pulls this to the bracket. Now with this front one, it's a little bit harder. You'll see him, he'll have to go back and forth uh, from the wrench side to the ratchet side to get this tightened up and get that flange to sit equally on both sides. So don't crank down one side and then crank down the other. You're just gonna have to take your time and go back and forth until that seats correctly on the front. It helps too, if you're doing this by yourself, get your nuts started and then go ahead and put your bracket on the back to hold the back side of the pipe up and then you can go back up to the front just make sure you leave everything loose until you get everything installed don't tighten anything down until everything is put in place as you can see there we got both of the nuts back on one on each side like i said gradually go from one side to the other or like we just did i was on one side and he was on the other and we were both turning at the same time to get that to seat equally so you can see that a little bit better now okay so we're ready to do the cross under pipe and you're going to take your exhaust bracket make sure you have the nut down so you can actually get to it and slip that on over the header pipe going to take your hanging bracket make sure that you have it just like this slide it through crossover pipe and i have josh on the other side kind of doing both of this at the same time we already have our bolt and our hanging bracket from before slide that now that's just a hanger so we just want to start that washer and nut and leave that loose for now we'll slide that into the header pipe as far as it'll go but we'll leave this loose for adjustment on the other side so what we need to do now is go ahead and run our wires back from the o2 sensors and get those plugged back in Now that we have the O2 sensors plugged back in and the wires zip tied back off, all we have to do is put the slip-ons on on both sides. So now that we have the slip-ons completely on, we still need to get back under the pipe 
and tighten up our crossover clamp here and our crossover bracket bolt right here. So all we had left to do was just put our clamps and our heat shields. Make sure that you kind of mock it up on the bike like you can just walk it over to the bike and make sure that you orientate the nut heads where you can actually get to them. If you put these on and slip it on the bike and then you realize that you can't actually get to the nut. So um, just pay attention to the way that you put your clamps on and everything will go smooth from there. All right guys, now the final step would be putting this floorboard back on and I'm gonna show you this step just because this kit comes with spacers as you can see here. This one's for the back and this spacer here is for the front. And the reason why they put those spacers in there is because this header pipe sticks out farther than the stock one. You can actually see a cutout right here for the floorboard and a cutout right here for the brake pedal. You're gonna have two different size bolts, new bolts that come with it, short one in the back, long one in the front. I will go ahead and apply a little blue Loctite to each one of the bolts. Doesn't take a whole lot guys, put like that on one side, it'll thread in. You can start by pushing the bolt through the floorboard, put it through the spacer, and then go ahead and put it up to the bike since you already have the other spacer on there. Grab your short one, put it in the back, Once they're tight, just give them a little snug. And you're good to go. So that's pretty much it right there guys. There's not a whole lot more to it. No specialty tools that you need to do or anything like that or rent or buy. And hopefully this video will help you and show you that it's not that bad and it is something that you can do at home. Like I said in the beginning of the video, check out the channel guys. Almost a hundred bagger related videos on there. So if the video helped you, hit the like button. If you like the channel, hit the subscribe button. And uh, guys, we don't do the Patreon thing. We don't ask you for money. Uh, we're here to help you guys save money. So we're never gonna ask you for money. All of our videos are free, every single one of them. But until the next video, guys, I'm gonna get out of here and get back to work. We got a ton more stuff to do to this bike. But until the next video, as always, be safe. Keep your knees in the breeze.